Okay, in this video we're going to consider the following. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, finite sums. So, the sum from j equals 1 to n, here n is a positive uh, integer of a j. which is a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 plus a n. Now, that is the same as a j1 plus a j2 plus dot 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 plus a j n where j1 J2 all the way up to Jn is a permutation of the set of integers from 1 all the way to n. So permutation of the set 1 to da 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 up to n. So this is true. When you have a finite sum, you can rearrange the terms any way you want and still get the same answer. The result is unchanged by that. Now let's consider the same question with a infinite series. Is it true that if I have an infinite series that converges is it true that rearranging the terms of that series uh, gives you a resulting series that still converges into the same value? So let's consider this example here. Let's look at our alternating harmonic series j equals 1 to n of negative 1 to the j plus 1 over j. So what is that? The viewer may recall that that's just 1 minus a half plus 1 third minus 1 quarter plus 1 fifth minus 1 sixth plus 1 seventh minus 1 eighth plus 1 ninth minus 1 over 10 plus and so on. This is just the development of this uh, of this formula, of this expression. Now, what we know is that this does converge to the natural logarithm of 2, which uh, has a decimal expansion of 0.693, etc slightly less than a uh, 0.7 just a little bit less than 0.7 so it is a number less than 0.7 now what we're going to do here is we're going to rearrange the terms here uh, in, a, in, a, in a certain specific manner and then show that that rearrangement will actually be different it, it will still give you a convergent uh, series, it will still give you a convergent infinite series, but it won't be the same, it won't converge to ln of 2. That is our goal. So, here it goes. Let's do this. Let's, let's try to develop the pattern of the example that uh, we want to look at. Let's take 1 plus 1 third, and then subtract the 1 half. plus now let's so we're taking this that and that out of the picture now let's take the one fifth plus one seventh and then take away the one quarter and then plus so I've got the one fifth one seventh and one quarter out of the picture now I'm gonna go for the next one will be the next uh, triple of terms will be 1 over 9 plus 1 over 11 minus 
the next one after one quarter will be a one six plus and so goes the pattern okay, okay so let me define a way of obtaining this a uh, rearrangement I'm going to do it this way uh, I'm going to call I'll define some sequences here I'm going to call um, I'm going to call n the sum from j equals 1 to n of the quantity 1 over 4 j minus 3 plus 1 over 4 j minus 1 I'm going to call t of n the sum from j equals 1 to n of negative 1 over 2j. Right, so so Rn equals the finite sum beginning at 1 going all the way up to n of 1 over excuse me 4j minus 3 plus 1 over 4j minus 1 t of n will be the sum from j equals 1 to n of negative 1 over 2j Okay, so let's add these two together. Let's take Rn plus T of n. What is that? Well, is that finite sum plus that finite sum, which can be made into a single sum with a starting at j equals 1 to j equals n of what? Well, the terms of the sum of Rn, since it's a, it is a rearrangement of sorts, but since these two are finite, we are, we are taking for granted that they will give the same result. So I'm 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 basically getting to the final step. There will be some intermediate steps here, but what I end up adding is a four one over four j minus three plus 1 over 4j minus 1 plus negative 1 over 2j which you could write as 1 over negative 1 over 2j now let's try j equals 1 and see what we get when j equals 1 the first term of this sum will be uh, 1 over 1 which is 1 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 half when j equals 2 what am I going to get? well in here the denominator is 8 minus 3 which is 5 so it's 1 fifth uh, plus 1 seventh minus when j is 2 that becomes 1 quarter so, what we can see here is that this sum, this finite sum, uh, generates a rearrangement up to the nth term, n triple in this case, it's our triple. So the nth triple of this guy, uh, of this rearrangement, gets generated by this finite sum. So what I want to what I want to realize is the the infinite series that we've got from the rearrangement. So all, it's all a matter of taking this sum, taking the limit of this sum as n approaches infinity. Then that just that is that will just be this uh, infinite series right here after the rearrangement. So let's do let's do a little bit of the algebra there is some algebra involved I can put this as a single a fraction uh, and we'll display that the result here from this 
prepared nodes. So here I'm in these nodes I'm showing that the terms that the terms from my rearrangement are produced by the the finite sum. So the series that I obtain after the rearrangement will simply be the limit of that sum. So the limit of that sum which put together is exactly what I had in the notes. Now here is where the algebra th th there is going to be some algebra taking place in here finding the least common denominator and rewriting this three this sum and difference of three fractions as a single fraction. So at the end of the algebra we get this the sum from j equals 1 to n of a j minus 3 all over 2j times 4j minus 3 times 4j minus 1. We're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity. So, so we have that our rearrangement 1 plus 1 third minus 1 half plus 1 fifth plus 1 seventh minus 1 quarter plus that, uh, that is the same as the sum j equals 1 to n taking the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, 8j minus 3 let me see let me copy that 8j minus 3 2j 4j minus 3 4j minus 1. Okay, so this series, this infinite series converges. And it converges because you can compare this to a 1 over j squared. The, the sum of uh, 1 over the series of 1 over and j squared j equals 1 to infinity. This is one of those convergent uh, p series. So it does converge, we know that much. Also, if you look at the terms of the series, they're all positive for j equals 1, 2, etc. So for each j that you pick beginning with 1, the terms of the series converge. Uh, excuse me, the terms of the series are positive. So this is a convergent series where each of the terms is positive. So what I can say is that, what we can say is that, uh, then that series, that series, the limit n approaches infinity of the sum of uh, 8j minus 3 over 2j, 4j minus 3, 4j minus 1 is superior to the first term of that series. The first term of that series, of course, happens when uh, when j equals 1. So it's greater than 8 times 1 minus 3, which is uh, 5 over uh, 2 times 1, which is 2. Uh, when j is 1, this 4j minus 3 is 1, and 4j minus 1 is 3. So that's equal to 5, 6. So our convergence series, after the rearrangement, happens to be a number larger than 5 over 6. Oh, but 5 over 6 is a number larger than ln of 2. Okay, so that is basically our example. So let's take a look at these notes. Th these are the accompanying notes to, to this presentation. Uh, we talk about uh, the rearrangements of terms for a finite sum, and then we present our example that says that does not hold for infinite series that rearrangement does not fi does not leave the the sum fixed so let's close with a couple of 
exercises for the for the audience. First exercise will be to present an example of a convergent series S such that rearranging its terms in this fashion you interchange every pair, every consecutive pair of terms. So A1, A2 gets rearranged as A2 plus A1 and then A3 plus A4 gets rearranged as A4 plus A3 and so on. Continue that pattern. So present an example that where such rearrangement produces a, a series, perhaps a convergent series, probably a convergent series, but it does not converge to the same value that S does. So that's our first exercise. Our second exercise will be to determine whether you can find two convergent series j equals s equals j s equals to the sum j from 1 to infinity of a j t the sum from j equals 1 to infinity of b j such that if you add the values that these two converge that does not turn out to be the same as the series formed by the adding the terms pairwise of the individual terms of the former series. So the question is to determine whether such exists. If such exists, an example will be the best way to to to, to illustrate that the answer is affirmative, that there, that such example exists. If it if there is if they do not exist, then a proof would be what we're after. Okay, that is that is it for this presentation.